Hey guys, Scott here, and today I want to talk a little bit more about Hyperfocus, the new perk from Rebecca Chambers, and the whole Project W DLC for DVD. And uh, so I made a video a couple weeks ago where I talked about how I think it had too many synergies with other perks, which made it probably a bit stronger than it's intended to be. And uh, after having tested it a bunch in solo queue with no real pre-setup matches or anything like that, um, yeah, I can confirm it's definitely, it's too strong. The thing is, though, it's it's not the perk itself that is too strong. It is the synergies that it has with other things that alleviate what is supposed to be the pretty high difficulty of hitting every single grade skill check in a row. And I still think the correct solution for this is to make it not work with toolboxes, just like Autodidact doesn't work with toolboxes. I don't know why this would work with toolboxes. It's the same sort of basic effect where you get more benefits per skill check. So uh, I think it should just simply not work with toolboxes. Toolboxes give you way more skill checks. They can be replenished. Um, they can have charge add-ons. You can do it multiple times per match. I think that's the core issue. And if they change that, I don't think I'd have a problem with the perk anymore. That being said, I just watched a clip of Zubat doing a gen in 50 seconds with no toolbox. And there is no gen perk in the entire game that can do that. Uh, Hyperfocus is currently the best gen repair perk in the game if you're able to hit those skill checks. Um, and the thing is, though, Stakeout allows you to fuck up once, twice, three, four times. And it's not like it's hard to get Stakeout stacks. And the, the point of this video is I want to address people's counter arguments to this because I see people making the same stupid counter arguments that make no sense. And I want to really address those to elucidate how silly they are. So the first one is with Stakeout. People like they see, you know, you're on hyper focus with Stakeout. It's a no brainer. If you don't know, uh, Stakeout makes it so. Uh, when you stay in the killer's territory, it's not in a chase, you get stakeout tokens, and for each token you consume, every good skill check is converted to a great skill check, so obviously there's really inherent synergy there. Also, there's a side note, um, another reason Hyperfocus is having unintended synergies, it's doubling the base chance of stakeout, which is has an additional bonus percent. So you're actually getting more benefit from Hyperfocus with stakeout than you're supposed to. That's another separate topic. Um, but people keep saying like, okay, well, you have to like, yeah, but... I saw this clip of this guy doing a gen in 40 seconds, but he's spent the whole match getting stakeout stacks, doing nothing. I don't know where this, like, whole idea of you have to, like, sit and do nothing to get stakeout stacks happened, but that's not the case. You can get stakeout stacks by doing anything, by running to a hook, by running to a generator, by running to a totem, running to a chest, running to heal someone that's on the ground, running to heal someone that's, like, just traversing to a different generator. Like, you don't just have to sit in a corner and do nothing to get stakeout stacks. You just play the game normally, and you just naturally get them over time. If you're going out of your way and just sit in the killer's terradius, yeah, you're not doing it right. And, of course, those clips should be thrown out because you're actually being less efficient when you could have spent that time doing generators instead. Those are people that are just farming clips, not actually using the perk to good effect. But most of my stakeout stacks I get just because I'm repairing a generator and the killer is chasing somebody else. Or I'm walking to a different generator. I'm going to heal somebody or just something like that. So... That, I think, is a very silly argument. Um, there's no basis of argument if you're saying, hey, people that are using stakeout incorrectly are making this less efficient. Okay, stop using stakeout like a dumbass, and you'll get way more value out of this. You just get the stacks naturally. Now, obviously, if you're on, like, Red Forest against the Stealth Killer or something like that, then yes, you're obviously not going to get every uh, every single game. But no perk has value every game. That's not an argument against it. You can run Unbreakable 50 games in a row and never get slugged. Unbreakable is still a very good perk. It doesn't really change the argument at all. Um, next is the whole, well, you have to dedicate your whole build to it. And I think this is a silly argument for a number of reasons. First of all, if all four survivors dedicate their build to this, yes, their chase will be slightly weaker. Think about it. What chase perks are there? It's mostly exhaustion perks, right? Those are like the key chase perks. You can still have a chase perk with this build. You can just run build to last, hyper focus, and, um, stake out, and then run whatever exhaustion perk you want. So you can still have your, your chase perk. Um, there's not that many other, like, active chase perks. There are things like Unbreakable and stuff that happen, like, situationally for outside of chase, but there's not too many, like, actually chase-heavy perks in the game, other than the Exhaustion perks, which you can still run. But even if that's the case, if everybody devotes themselves to this build, it doesn't matter how much worse your chases are. Also, this is a side note, you can get chased without perks. You don't need perks to get chased. There's still fundamental mechanics of the game that you could just play normally. But I digress. If everybody on the team is using this build, the game is going to last two or three minutes. It doesn't matter what chases you have because there's going to be two chases in the entire match. For example, this match against this, this hag in the background, there was basically one chase in the entire game. Eventually, someone got hooked in the base and we all killed ourselves out of boredom because, I mean, we didn't get to do anything the entire game. But, you know, if, if everyone is running this build, it doesn't matter that everyone's dedicating themselves to this build because the game won't last long enough for that to even matter. Also... There are uh, people saying, well, 
there are perks like, you know, pain resonance and, you know, dead man switch and deadlock and stuff like that that can interrupt this and kind of ruin it. And that's true. It will interrupt a particular use of hyperfocus. It will break the spree. The problem is you can't always be downing someone every 30 seconds to stop. You can do a gen in 40 seconds with this. If someone has, if you have a 40 second window in which someone doesn't go down to trigger jolt or pain resonance or whatever, that's it. They've already gotten value from the perk. You have such a short window to deny value from this perk, and that is part of the problem with it, in my opinion. The window is so small. If everyone's running it, you can't be downing four people at once unless you're Leatherface and they're just standing still. So they're still going to get immense value from it. And in fact, the only reason I think people are not complaining is that simply more people are just not using the build. I think I've been running this build for the past three days now, and I've only seen like four people total using it. And I, I'm so surprised that that's the case, but... I promise, as a killer, if you start going against more of this, you will notice how ridiculous this can be. And the thing is, with Stakeout, you don't even have to be that good. Everyone can hit one or two skill checks in the beginning. Um, because, you know, they're going normal speed, it's really not that hard. Hell, you can run, this is not happening if you want it to be even easier. But once you start, you know, getting to the faster ones, then the Stakeout stacks can just make up for it. And then it doesn't even matter if the person's not that great at skill checks, they don't have to be anymore. And I think that is, you know... A lot of the issues why hyperfocus is too synergistic. Again, hyperfocus itself, I think, is great design. Any perk that makes a generator uh, feel more fun to do is excellent design. And I don't want hyperfocus itself nerfed. It just, in my opinion, needs to not work with pool boxes or stakeout. It needs to just not have one of those two synergies uh, because it just makes it too strong. If they make it not work with toolboxes anymore, suddenly the whole built to last thing where I can do this multiple times per match doesn't matter anymore. And now we've just got a perk where still you can do gens by yourself in 50 seconds. You can do that. But, you know, at least it's not going to be something that you're going to be doing very often multiple times per match. I think if a perk can save you 30 seconds without even a toolbox, it's problematic. And uh, so I, I really hope the devs do address one thing of it. Or maybe the community just collectively decides to never use these perks and we can address it that way. I don't know. Either way, I'm sticking with my guns here, having used it for several days and doing multiple gens per match in 40 seconds. You can go my VODs and look at this. I'm not making this up. I didn't set up anything specific. I just ran this build and did gens in 40 seconds multiple times. It's uh, it's too strong. It just is. I'm sorry.